Hello, welcome to the Pretty Stitch. This is my second video in my two basics, you know, learning basics of Tunisian crochet. So the first one we went, went over the Tunisian simple stitch. So now we're going to go over the Tunisian purl stitch. And it's the setup is the same way. And again, I'm using a short hook. So if you know you're still exploring Tunisian crochet, you know, don't invest in a whole bunch of Tunisian crochet hooks. You know, you can certainly do a whole bunch with a straight one. And as I said before, if you're worried about stitches falling off, just pop a rubber band on the bottom and you're, you'll be set. Okay, so we are going to chain 10 again. We're going to work a swatch. And as we went over the first video, which I will link in the description box. So if you're just stumbling upon this and wanted to learn Tunisian crochet, I highly recommend you watch the first one. Because once you learn the Tunisian simple stitch, then working Tunisian pearl stitch will make a whole lot more sense to you. Okay, so now we need to work in our chain. So as before, the loop on our hook counts as a stitch. So this is stitch one. I've worked 10 chains, so we will have 10 loops on our hook. And we are going to work in the back bump because it just is a little bit easier. And we're going to continue to pull up our loops. So you just turn the chain over, pull up your loop in the back bump. Instead of working them off, we're leaving them on. So this will be our setup row. And as before, when you're working Tunisian crochet, there's two steps involved. So this is, some people call it the forward pass, and then you'll work your return pass. Or step A, step B. <laughs> okay, so I have my 10 loops on my hook. So now I need to work these off. And as I said before, most patterns will have you yarn over and you'll just pull through one loop. But sometimes you, it doesn't, you know, it'll tell you something differently. So, you know, just read your pattern just to make sure. <laughs> All right, yarn over, and then you're gonna pull through two. And just continue to pull through two all the way down. And this is your setup row your foundation getting you ready to do whatever you want to do all right so we have row one already completed and as you can see these are all of our little bars as we went over in the other video so now we are going to do the purl stitch so any knitters out there this will be very familiar to you when you're knitting you have the yarn forward and it's the same thing with Tunisian, you're going to have your yarn forward. So this might be a little foreign if you know you've only just done crocheting because crocheting usually your yarns in the back and you know you yarn over um, in and away you go. But with knitting, I, and I do knit, a, I'm not a great knitter, but I can knit. You know, when you're purling, you have the yarn in front. When you're doing a knit stitch, the yarn is in back. So the same thing applies. Your yarn is going to be in the front. So you're going to have your yarn in front and this is your first bar right here. So you want to have the yarn in between. Now they'll say this is the first bar, but you know, in between this stitch here and here, you're gonna to wanna to have your yarn in front like that. Then you're going to insert your hook in the first bar. So it can be a little bit fiddly, especially if you're not used to having yarn in the front, but once you get you know going, it's, it's not too bad. So then you have your yarn in front like that. Now you're going to yarn over and pull through your stitch. So now you've created a little purl stitch so you can see the little purl down there. So you've created one and you're going to continue to do that so you have your yarn in front and just pull up your loops. Now for some reason when I do purl stitches I always use my thumb to kind of push it on the hook. It's just how I do it. I just feel like I have a little bit more control than just trying to, you know. <laughs> so how, whatever technique works best for you. And I do tend to be a tighter crocheter, even with Tunisian, so I think that's partly why too. So I just kind of use my, little, my thumb to pop it on there. So we are working Tunisian pearl all the way across. So I have my yarn in front, working in my bar. And we're going to keep going. And we started with 10 chains, so I will have 10 loops on my hook. So this is row two. 
Squeaky yarn. Not always a really nice sound. <laughs> Sorry about that. So here is my second to my last stitch. So I have nine loops, so now we have to work in our last stitch right here. So we're going to do that in purl. So you're going to yarn over, or I mean not yarn over, you're going to have your yarn in front just like you've been doing. Insert your hook, wrap her around, Oops. move the tail, and so now we have completed our first step for row two of purl. So you can see, you can really see those purl stitches. They're really showing up nicely. So we're going to work the stitches off the same way. Pull through the one and then continue to pull through two for the rest of the row. Now the fun thing with purl stitches, as I said in the previous video, Tunisian crochet, it produces a really nice fabric, but it tends to curl a lot. So purl stitches can really, really help with the curling, even with knitting. If you you know, throw in some purl stitches, you know, it kind of just helps it to behave itself instead of, you know, curling all over the place, it, you know, it makes it, gives it a little more structure, helps it to lay flatter. So I often will just stick some purl stitches, especially if I'm making a blanket, you know, it's just so that my blanket's not curling all over creation or I have to block it, you know, within an inch of its life. <laughs> so we're going to work row three and you still have the same nice clean edge here. So you have your two stitches for Tunisian pearl. So we'll work two more rows. So you're going to do the same thing. You can see your bar right there, right there, and then your pearl stitch is right on the bottom there. So I'm going to put my yarn in front and work my pearl stitch. And we're going to keep doing that with my squeaky yarn. But this is a good workhorse, workhorse yarn. And as I said before in the previous video, when you're just learning this, I highly recommend using a solid colored yarn and a light colored yarn as well. I didn't state that before. You know, you don't want to, you know, bust out the black yarn and be like, okay, I'm going to learn how to do Tunisian crochet because it's not going to be fun. So definitely use a lighter colored yarn. So now we need to work our last stitch in purl and that last stitch can be kind of tricky but and most stitches I'm going to show you a trick in another video but I want you to learn just a straight up purl stitch so this is just a swatch so you're going to be a yarn in front so right here is where you're going to put your purl and as with a simple stitch you want to watch your edges so they don't get too wonky and crazy so now we're going to work these guys off. So pull through the one and then you're going to pull through the two for the rest of the row. And we'll work one more and you will see the difference of how much flatter this swatch will be compared to your simple stitch swatch which was, you know, curling like crazy, but this one nice and flat. Okay, so we'll work one more row of purl, so your yarn in front, and then pop it in that first bar, and you're going to keep on going down the road here. So this is our first step for row four, and then you'll work your return pass. So when you're learning this stitch, you can see why you would need a really long hook for, you know, if you were making a blanket, you know, the stitches are not going to fit, obviously, on a regular crochet hook. You know, that would be torture if you tried to do that. <laughs> but there are projects that you can do with a short crochet hook, and even blankets, there's different techniques that people have come up with. It's a pretty versatile, um, craft, I think. It's, you know, I wouldn't call it straight up. It's Tunisian crochet. It's its own standalone craft. 
but it really does help if you have the basic crochet knowledge to start with. But again, if you've never, you know, crocheted and you've only knitted, I'm sure you could pick this up pretty quickly. Okay, so we have worked four rows. Now it's a little bit harder to count the rows looking at it, you know, straight on. So just turn it over and you can see one, two, three, four. So really simple. So now we are going to work these stitches off. And as I said before, you want to work off your stitches, you know, according to your stitch pattern. So we are going to work these off in Tunisian purl stitch, unless the pattern states differently, but we're working these off in Tunisian purl stitch. So you're going to do the same thing of having your yarn in front, insert your hook in the purl stitch, and you're basically working your slip stitch. Boom, like that. Really, really simple. Yarn in front. Now, if you notice here with, sometimes with purl stitching, the bar can get a little bit lost. Let me get a smaller hook here. The purl can kind of push up the bar a little bit, but it's there. So you just want to be careful, you know, especially if you're kind of watching TV or something, it can be easy to miss. So especially if you're learning and you know, you're not quite sure what to look for. So just be a little bit mindful of that where your you know the pearl can kind of push that bar you know push up into the bar and then you can't see it but it is there so there there it is just wanted to point that out oops come on so i have trouble sometimes with my hook staying in the loop and that hook didn't want to leave the loop so you know <laughs> all right so we're going to go back to working these guys off so i put it in the bar yarning over pulling through working my slip stitch And again, as before in the previous video, you don't want to, you know, have your tension be too tight. So just watch your tension. Be mindful of that. Just like when you're doing, you know, regular crochet, you want to make sure that you have even tension. Otherwise, your project can end up looking a little bit wonky. Sometimes you can fix that a little bit with blocking, but if it's too, you know, uneven, then, you know, not even a good block can help it. All right, so we're going to work that last stitch, which is it's right here. A little tricky to see, but it's there. And now we've worked off all of our stitches in Tunisian purl stitch. And so you can see the top looks very similar to the bottom. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching.